Hey everyone, and welcome. As you all probably already know, Uzi is widely considered to be the best player in the world right now. He's known for insane mechanics and calculated, aggressive play. Today, we're going to break down his mid-game decision making in a challenger level solo queue game during the World Championship in Korea. We covered how he pulled ahead in laning phase in our previous guide, but for context, we'll be starting from 10 minutes in to see how he breaks bottom tower. Before we get started, let's go over some of Uzi's objectives that he'll be playing around throughout the mid game. Mission 1. First, gain tempo, then rotate. This is a concept we went over in our Jinx video. As a reminder, tempo is the advantage to get somewhere before the enemy team, like Baron or another lane, that you gain by pushing waves before the enemy, or by getting kills, or by simply getting an efficient back time unit. Uzi will dictate the pace of the game and set up plays by shoving waves, gaining tempo advantages, and using those advantages to rotate to another objective. Mission 2, Split Farm. This is another concept we went over in our Jinx macro guide. Essentially, Uzi is going to want to make sure all three lanes are farming throughout the mid game, even if it means rotating himself out of mid to catch a wave that's about to hit the side lane tower. Uzi accomplishes two things by doing this. One, he ensures he scales properly into the late game as a hyper carry, and two, he creates more opportunities for team-wide map movements off of lane priority, which is when a laner has a tempo advantage. Mission 3, Play Around CC. This is pretty standard for most carries, but Uzi takes it to another level against a high CC comp and executes some insane gameplay through anticipation and priming himself to outplay those stuns. Alright, let's get into it. So our clip starts off with Uzi shoving a wave in and immediately walking up river. We're already seeing an example of mission 1, in case you needed an idea of how often Uzi is going to be gaining tempo advantages and using them to rotate. Uzi pings that he's walking up to the river pixel brush, encouraging his Gragas to take vision control with him. This is important, involving your teammates in your tempo based plays is crucial to making them successful. You can tell that Uzi is satisfied with clearing that ward and going back to lane, as he repeatedly thinks about pathing back to bottom to refresh his tempo advantage. However, Gragas and Rakan insist on overextending for an engage. Fortunately, Uzi is nearby and saves heal until the last moment to bait Zin into blowing flash. He even nearly lands a kill on Zin by saving jump to finish his burst with a strong auto R auto combo and jumping out immediately after. After leaving Aatrox to die, Uzi knows that he's closer to bottom than Zaya is and sees an opportunity to clear tribush vision before Zaya can get there. You may be wondering, what if there was no ward? Well, Uzi knows he just forced Zin to base and sees the enemy mid laner. He's stronger than the enemy bot lane 2v2, so he can get to try first and zone them from walking through. This way, he either gets a chance to force a trade, or he can shove and gain another tempo advantage while they're forced to take a safe path to tower. Champions like Ash, Misfortune, and Ezreal are some of the best at getting to a choke point like Tribush first and poking the enemy as they try to walk through it. Anyway, Uzi clears the pink, and Zaya shows up trying to walk through Tri. Uzi wants to zone her from this choke point and takes the fight. He probably could have jumped in to kill Zaya since they both had no heal, but staying disciplined and taking the health advantage here is just as good, if not better, than trading his health bar for a kill. That sounds kinda weird, but if he had chunked himself for the kill, he wouldn't be able to pressure the tower safely afterwards, thus prolonging the game. But now that they're chunked and he's healthy, Uzi can start trying to break bottom tower. He starts by hard pushing the wave, expecting to take tower while Zaya is back, and realizes that she actually stayed. Now if you were Tristana here and saw Zaya staying, what would your game plan be? Before going over the best answer, take a wild guess at what Uzi does. So he decides to just try to auto them, and fails to juke the thresh hook, getting chunked heavily in the process. Fortunately, he lives and avoids the Zen gank. Uzi would have been better off being satisfied with the health advantage and freely autoing the tower. The enemy 2v2 was too low to stop him themselves, and red buff is about to spawn. So any attempt on them to stay and stop him would be a clear giveaway that Zin is ganking. Safely leveraging ganks like this is key. By drawing ganks and surviving, Uzi is both freeing up his other lanes to play more aggressively while opening up his jungler to get ahead of the enemy jungler. After escaping, Uzi thinks about healing off of fruit but realizes he has a window to break tower since Zaya was forced to back and takes it. Uzi then shoves the next wave in before immediately backing. By shoving the next wave here, he gains tempo to rotate to another lane. Where would you, the viewer, rotate from here? Well, Uzi paths top. Why? There's a few reasons for this. 
For one, Gragas is pathing top as well. Pathing top to take tower and herald with Gragas already there will accelerate the game faster than pathing bottom, waiting for Gragas to rotate down to take dragon, and then rotating top. The enemy also ganked Uzi's top, leaving the lane open. Pathing top here fills in that gap, playing to mission 2, and leaving bottom to get picked up by Uzi's top laner once he respawns. Not to mention, Uzi can probably pick up a free kill here. In comparison, rotating bottom here would have been a weak choice since there's no tower to attack and Gragas is rotating to the other side of the map. Mid would have been a fine rotation since he'd be filling an empty lane and quickly pressuring an undefended tower, which goes pretty well for Tristana. Also worth noting that mid is almost never a bad rotation for an AD carry. Anyway, Uzi gets a free kill for coming top and they trade tower and rift herald for bot tower. This is super worth since Tristana wants to accelerate the game and break outer towers, similar to Jinx in our Jinx guide. He shoves the next wave and immediately backs, going right back to mission 1. Now, where would you path from here? This one should have been pretty straightforward. Uzi should path mid. Urgot's already bottom, and top is pushed too far up to farm. However, Aatrox is already at the mid minion wave, so Uzi farms jungle on his way to mid. After Raptors, Uzi groups mid as Rakan prods for an engage. Notice how instead of trying to follow up with any autos, Uzi holds his position in the back, waiting for the enemy to approach his range instead of vice versa. As Uzi clears the next minion wave, he continues to hold this defensive position. Casio starts to feel safe and walks up in response, and gets punished by Uzi's team. Despite the Casio derping here, it's worth noting Uzi played the gank well by continuing to play defensively until the engage began. Too, too often, players will ruin a gank by walking up too early and giving it away, instead of drawing them in and allowing the engage to lead. On a rampage, Uzi wastes no time in immediately walking top to catch the next minion wave, playing around mission 2 and leaving mid for Aatrox. Ideally, he'd like to farm the next wave as well, but a fight breaks out mid. First, let's just watch this fight. So Uzi ditches the wave and walks straight mid to join the fight. Usually we're against jumping into fights, but since the action is happening in mid lane, Uzi's clear to jump on Thresh here. Notice how he only autos Thresh a couple times, refusing to walk into his box even though Rakan popped the wall. This is properly respecting enemy CC, playing around mission 3. Uzi regroups with his team mid, kiting the Thresh from right outside of flay range until he dies like a troll. He picks up Zaya next, and jumps like a savage animal, headfirst, into a freaking Akali Cassio. Then, he gets the nastiest Cassio ult dodge ever. Uzi's movement breaks ankles, and I wouldn't ever recommend doing this at home. But if you're feeling inspired enough to start jumping into Cassios in your solo queue games, remember mission 3, and be totally ready to click in any direction away from her on both the moment you're in range, and between every auto. Uzi follows this up with another bonkers play, flashing under tower to kill Zin, saving jump for before the killing blow lands, and jumping again over terrain to escape Akali. We saw another example of this technique from Doublelift in our last team fighting video, but to be honest, this was way sicker. Ooh, that sidestep. Once he's finally in the clear, Uzi starts shoving the mini wave in to kill mid tower and back immediately. Uzi wants mid the rest of the game since both of his solos are melee champs, so he starts by pathing to red and then groups with his team at mid to shove and clear vision. However, after defending the next mid minion wave, Uzi realizes top wave is about to slow push outwards and Aatrox won't leave mid, so he immediately starts pathing top, playing to mission 2. Uzi catches the wave and quickly pushes the next one, then uses his tempo to control the enemy jungle. Face checking was a little bit risky, but he uses a good scrying or placement, and otherwise this is a great example of rotating to catch farm, shoving to gain tempo, and then using that tempo to gain vision control. 
Again, Uzi pings on himself while he has a tempo advantage, calling his team to make a play on whoever shows up to the top minion wave. Gaining the tempo and moving first, then calling your teammates for the play, helps to make the play look clear and easier to follow for them. That being said, they might just ignore you anyway. These things happen. Cassio shows up to farm the top wave and gets obliterated by Uzi and his team. Immediately after, Uzi uses his tempo to take blue and to path to mid tower and rotating away from the enemy who all went top to defend the push. Right after mid tower, Uzi keeps his tempo advantage by not overstaying for the wave and instead paths straight to dragon. This is super strong rotational play here from Uzi. He doesn't miss a beat, walking from blue to mid tower to dragon, back to mid to catch a wave, and then even to farm a jungle camp after the mid minion wave. Alas, finally Uzi makes a macro mistake. He pads straight to wolves after raptors, but there's a wave mid unattended. He definitely should have pathed mid first to shove the wave, then after shoving the wave, he can decide if he can farm another jungle camp. As a result, Uzi is forced to leave the mid minion wave as he rushes up to the fight in top lane. But he doesn't just walk straight in. He waits for the fight to develop a bit and for CC to be used, a concept that we went over in Team Fighting Part 1. After taking the kill, Uzi goes right back to mid lane to shove the wave in completely, once again gaining a tempo advantage, and uses his tempo to rotate straight to top while Cassio responds to the mid wave. This is yet another killer example of mission 2. From here, Uzi just starts rolling over everyone. Juking Cassio ult again and jumping over the wall to kill Thresh, being ready to flash his hook. Both of these outplays are made easier by mentally preparing yourself to dodge the CC spell, playing to mission 3. Let's go over how Uzi broke this game open one more time. Once he got a lead in lane, Uzi started by shoving for tempo and rotated mid first, forcing the enemy bot lane to rotate in response. He then made sure he got back to bot lane before they did, and cut them off at tribush, chunking them so they couldn't safely stay. By doing this, he created an opening to break bottom tower. Then, he rotated top with his jungler to foil an enemy gank and to trade top tower and herald for bot tower. Immediately after, he initially pads mid to keep their range wave clear in mid lane, but moves top to catch a wave when Aatrox won't leave mid. After catching top, Uzi hard shoved the wave, pinged his team over to kill whoever came to defend the wave, and then immediately rotated again to mid as the enemy reacted by moving top thus creating an opening to take a free mid tower and dragon. Finally, after a kill top lane, Uzi pathed mid to hard shove the Cassio in and quickly rotates top while mid is pushed in to kill any remaining defenders top lane. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.